The following video clip is from TrainSignal's VMware vSphere training course, featuring nearly 18 hours of training from a certified VMware V expert. All right, and with that, let's put it to the test. Let's try out running VMware ESX4 inside Workstation. I'm going to tab over here to my computer that already has VMware Workstation installed. If we go up to Help here, you can see that I'm running VMware Workstation 6.5.1 build 126130. I'm running it on a Dell XPS M1330. It's a laptop and it has 4 gigs of RAM and it's running Windows Vista 32-bit with Service Pack 1. Now I know there's already a newer version of VMware Workstation out, version 652. That version works and other versions in the future I'm sure will continue to work if you want to run ESX inside Workstation. Now let me show you what we're going to accomplish when we're all done. What I have here is VMware ESXi version 4.0. You can see it's release build 140815. This is actually ESXi 4.0 release candidate. And when we're all done, this is actually what it's going to look like. And what I did to get to this point is I took my VMware ESXi version 3.5 virtual machine that was already installed inside VMware Workstation and I just installed ESX 4.0 on top of that. So if you already have a VMware ESX i 3.5 server running inside VMware Workstation you can just take that and install ESX 4 right on top of it and it works without any modifications. And you can see if I press F2 to customize this really is the console for ESX Server 4.0. So what I'm going to do now is let's stop this virtual machine and let's create a brand new ESX Server 4.0 inside Workstation. We'll actually close this out. So to get started we're going to do new virtual machine. We're going to create a custom virtual machine. We'll just take the defaults for hardware compatibility and make it compatible with Workstation 6.5. I'll say that I will install an operating system later and say next. We'll choose to install a Linux operating system and we'll choose Red Hat Linux version 4 64-bit. I'll say next here and we're going to call this VM-ESX4 and I'm going to put it on my desktop just for ease of access. Alright there we go. I'll say next here. We'll just choose one processor. There's no need to make it a dual processor virtual machine. Now it's very important that you give it two gigabytes of RAM. ESX4 will require that. If you don't give it at least two gigabytes, it won't let you actually install ESX4. All right, you can use bridge networking and say next. You'll take the default here on the SCSI adapter. You'll create a brand new virtual disk. It'll be a SCSI disk. In all honesty, you can take the default of eight gigabytes for the maximum disk size although I really like to just give it as much disk space as possible because we're not going to allocate the disk space now. Of course for the best performance you do want to allocate the disk space now but really this is just a test ESX server so I'm not going for performance at this time. We do want to store the virtual disk in a single file and I'll say next. We'll take the default for the VMDK name and say next and at this point we want to customize hardware. All right, so on the CD drive, we do want to connect that to power on, and we're going to use the ISO image file for VMware ESX4. I'll browse to find the image file, and it's actually on my desktop in a folder called ESX4 RC, or Release Candidate. You can see here, here's the VMware VM Visor Installer 4.0, build 140815. And this is the 64-bit version. Of course, ESX4 is a 64-bit operating system. I could also choose to install the full version of ESX if I wanted to do that, but ESXi is just such a smaller and much more quicker installation. All right, let's go on down here. We want to remove any extraneous hardware, so I'm going to remove the floppy disk adapter. I'm going to remove the USB adapter. I'm going to remove the sound card. On the display, I want to disable the Accelerate 3D graphics. We're not going to need that. And then on processors, I want to set the execution mode to Intel VT or AMD V. I'll say OK there. I'll say Finish. And we're done creating the virtual machine. All right, there is one custom configuration change we need to make to the VMX configuration file for this virtual ESX machine. 
And in order to do that, I have to close out VMware Workstation. It's very important that you close VMware Workstation before you make this change. Now we'll go into the directory for this virtual machine, which we placed on our desktop, and we'll go to the VMX configuration file. I'll expand this out. And you see here's the VMware Virtual Machine Configuration. That's the VMX Configuration file. I'm going to right click on that and I'll say that I want to open this with Notepad. Alright, so here's our VMX Configuration file. There's one thing we need to add and it really doesn't matter where you add it. And what you need to add is the monitor underscore control dot restrict underscore backdoor equals true. That's really the only thing you need to do in this configuration file. Now if you run into some issues there are some other custom configuration changes you can place in this VMX configuration file and those changes will be different based on whether or not you have an Intel VT or an AMD V processor. To get the links with those custom configuration changes you can check out the links at the home page for this video that you're watching. At this point we can close this out and we'll make sure we say save. We can close out the folder and then we'll just go and reopen VMware Workstation. Alright at this point we're ready to boot up our new virtual VMware ESX4 server inside Workstation. I'm going to click the play button or the power on button right here and the boot up process will start. We'll just need to go through the regular ESXi installation here. I'll click on the ESXi installer in the VMware vVisor boot menu. It'll take just a second here to get to the installation page. Alright, here's the VMware ESXi version 4 installation screen. Of course, it's just the regular ESXi installation. I'll just accept the license agreement here, take the default of installing ESXi on the 100 gig partition that we created inside Workstation. I'll confirm the installation with F11 and I'm going to pause the video while the installation occurs and I'll be right back. You can see that it really completed and then we'll reboot ESXi and really test it out. Alright, there we go. Our installation was successful. I'm going to press enter to reboot. Again, this will take just a second and I'll be right back. Alright here we go it says that the VMware ESX version 4 server has booted up inside Workstation. It says that this server has gotten an IP address from DHCP and you can see it there it's 10.0.1.175. Of course you would want to take all the standard steps when installing a new ESX host. You would want to go in and customize the system you'd want to configure a root password, you'd want to assign a static IP address, configure the DNS servers on the ESX host, and you'd want to put this ESX host in your local DNS server. For the purposes of this video I'm just going to skip all those recommended system administration steps for a new ESX host and we're just going to connect to this virtual ESX server using the vSphere client. Now keep in mind you can't use the standard virtual infrastructure client from VMware ESX 3.x you need to use the VMware vSphere client. You can obtain it by going to the web page for this ESX server. If you open up your web browser and we type in the IP address for that server, you'll have to ignore the website security certificate issue and then here you can download the VMware vSphere client. Alright, I've already done that on another computer so let's close this out and let's tab over to that computer.